Hey guys, Loading Gears here. Welcome to part two of my Metal Gear Saga Roundup. Though I think I'm renaming it Metal Gear Lore Roundup, or just Metal Gear Lore, because of the fact that I was late uploading these videos. I was supposed to upload them uh, a few days ago, but shit happened in my life and in the internet. So I might not get to do all the games before the Phantom Pain comes out as I wanted to. But I hope I can at least get the big boss games out of the way before the Phantom Pain comes out because the original idea for this was uh, for people to understand the story of the Metal Gear, Metal Gear Saga that were um, the people that were gonna buy the Phantom Pain who were who have not bought the other games um, so they can understand the story better so hopefully I can at least get the big boss stories so they can understand at least the character they're playing with um, even if they won't understand any foreshadowing that may or may not happen in the Phantom Pain. Anyways, on the last episode we covered the virtuous mission of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Um, in this episode I'll attempt to cover all of Operation Snake Eater. Though I might be splitting it into two or three episodes depending on how long or short it is because even though I have the script, um, last time I wrote the script I thought it was really long because it was like four pages long but it ended up not being as long as I thought it would be after recorded it so who knows it, it all depends on how it's all gonna it, it's all gonna come down turn out but anyways Operation Snake Eater is based six days after the events of the virtuous mission Nikita Khrushchev makes a phone call to President Johnson blaming the US for the destruction of OKB 754 which was Sokolov's research facility um, this is the f research facility that Volgan destroyed with the David Crockett at the end of the Virtuous Mission. His proof being that um, their radars picked up an American aircraft flying nearby around that time. Most likely the aircraft snake was deployed in or rescued in. Now remember this was 1964 during the Cold War. Tensions between the US and the USSR were high. So in order to avoid nuclear war, President Johnson gift, um, sh gifted shifted the blame on the boss who he told had defected to Volgin's side. An answer he knew would be acceptable since Khrushchev was aware of Volgin wanting to be um, wanting to overthrow him. However, because of his power over the army um, decreasing ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis or perhaps because he knew he had America by the balls, Khrushchev told Johnson that he would um, require proof of America's innocence. This proof would come in the form of assassinating the boss. He implied that he also wished for Volgin to have the same fate. Being suspected uh, for taking part in the boss's defection, Snake was chosen as the agent to take this mission, not only because he was the boss's last apprentice, but in order to prove both his and Fox's innocence. If he failed, not only would the Fox unit be disbanded, but also, both he and Major Tom would be considered traitors and would be executed. Commencing Operation Snake Eater Snake infiltrates Sel Selenoyarsk, the same wilderness he was in during the Virtuous Mission, via a D-21 drone deployment at 30,000 feet in order to avoid the now heavily guarded airspace they used during the Virtuous Mission. In addition to the support team he, um, he had before, save the boss. He would be aided by Sigint, an expert or should I say the expert in weapons technology or um, weapons and technology. Major Tom also changes his code name to Major Zero. Snake's objective would be to kill the boss and Volgan, rescue Sokolov again, defeat the Cobra unit and eliminate any kind of nuclear threat posed by Volgan, namely the Shagohod. All of this only six days after almost drowning, being thrown off a cliff, breaking his elbow, cracking a couple, uh, multiple bones, and having his dignity and morale completely shattered by his former, former mentor. No biggie. The KGB would be helping Snake and, and his team by giving them access to one of their communication satellite, plus sending one of their agents, Adam, to help Snake set an escape route after his mission. Adam, being a former NSA agent whom, along with his partner Eva, defected to the Soviet Union. These two are codenames. 
Snake's first objective was to meet up with Adam in the abandoned factory he rescued Sokolov in. But before reaching it, he encountered the boss next to the crashed drone he used to inf infiltrate the jungle. She mocked him about his arm and proceeded to, once again, lay the, uh, lay the smackdown on him. She then shoots his crashed drone in order to blow it up and attract enemy soldiers and then tells him to go home. Snake then asks her why she defected and, and she says, I didn't. I'm loyal to the end, to my purpose. What about you, Jack? What's it going to be? Loyalty to your country or loyalty to me? Your country or your old mentor? The mission or your beliefs? Your duty to your unit or your personal feelings? You don't know the truth yet. But sooner or later, you'll have to choose. She points out his bandana as a way of saying that he will never survive if he can't put his personal feelings behind. Finally, she makes her horse stomp on Snake's hand and leaves, saying that if they meet again, she'll kill him. I now said I would try to stick to the facts, but I really want people, to, um, people who haven't played the other games to get a deep feeling of the stories and... These are all quotes that foreshadow a lot of Snake's actions. Also, the whole loyalty speech is something that sticks with Snake for a long time. Moving forward. Snake makes it to the abandoned factory and is approached by a woman in a motorcycle. She says that she is Eva and was sent in the place of Adam. Snake asks who are the Patriots, which is a password to which he, she's supposed to respond, Lali Lu Lay Lo, to, um, in order to prove her alliance. However, she hesitates to respond, so Snake asks her again, and before she could answer, they're, um, they're ambushed by Gru soldiers. She quickly takes them out and says, there is your answer. Although any, prof any professional soldier would question her inability to answer the question, she zips down her jacket to reveal she's only wearing a bra, and by the power of boobies, Snake asks no questions. Eva provides Snake with a scientist disguise in order to sneak into Greninigorki, a place which I will uh, I will be calling Grenin's research facility from now on, because that's what it is, and I sound ridiculous trying to say Russian words. She also hands him a handgun and returns him uh, the Mark 22 the boss dismantled. Did I mention she dismantled his gun again back in the jungle? Because she did. She does this a lot. Snake and Eva then spend the night at the factory as it was too dangerous to, tra too dangerous to tra travel in the jungle at night. At which point Eva suspiciously, suspiciously starts sending messages to her, superiors, to her superiors using a suitcase looking radio. The next morning, Snake and Eva are ambushed by Ocelot and his unit. Eva and Snake split ways since she's supposed to be a spy within the ranks so she can't let Ocelot see her with Snake. Snake proceeds to neutralize the Ocelot unit, save Ocelot himself. Ocelot starts shooting his gun in order to get, um, get Snake's attention. After six shots, Snake finds Ocelot holding Eva hostage with a gun to her head. This time he has a revolver. That's nice, he follows his enemy's advice. Eva, however, is wearing a motorcycle helmet, so Ocelot can't tell that it's her. But he does smell perfume and accidentally gra um, grabs her boob, so he knows she's a female spy. After mocking Ocelot for his overly glamorous gun, saying it looks more like a collector's item, Snake says, you're forgetting one very basic thing. You don't have what it takes to kill me. At this point, Ocelot tries to kill Snake, at which point he realizes he literally doesn't have what it takes to kill him. Bullets. He's not used to revolvers. So he forgot revolvers only carry six bullets. Eva takes this opportunity to escape and knocks him down. Six shots. That thing only carries six shots. The Makarov carries eight. You have to get a feel for how many you have left. Ocelot gets away and Eva states that she has to get there first or else she will rise suspicion. So she rides off. Snake later, later encounters Ocelot again 
Except this time she's got two um he's he's got two revolvers. Twelve shots. Once again, he learns from Snake. How nice. Honestly, I think the only reason he never kills him is because he learns too much from him. Anyways, after showing off his gun gun twirling skills for way too long. This time I've got 12 shots. Snake and Ocelot have a duel which ends when they get swarmed with hornets. Unable to shake them off, Snake jumps into a crevice that connects to a cave. After traversing the cave, Snake encounters the first member of the Cobra unit, codenamed The Pain. Each of the Cobra units have special supernatural abilities, which is a concept that Metal Gear holds dearly. They have realistic concepts while having a lot of supernatural things thrown here and there. The Pain can control hornets and get them to fight for him. After defeating the Pain, Snake finds an exit to the cave which leads to a warehouse. There, from far away, he sees an event unfold between various characters. Gru soldiers try to escort, escort Sokolov into the warehouse. In order to get things moving, Volgan reminds him that each time he resists, Tatiana, the woman they believe is um, Sokolov's lover, would suffer. He then proceeds to shock her with his powers. Ocelot being, an, <laughs> Ocelot being the immature man-child he is, decides to, um, decides to play a little game with Sokolov. He loads one revolver with one bullet and starts juggling three revolvers, um, two which are empty. Every now and then he will randomly and quickly pull the trigger while continuing to um, juggle the three revolvers. The point of this is he plans to see how quote unquote lucky he is by pulling the trigger six times. Why? Who knows? They still need him so what could they possibly gain from... whatever. Um, the boss, being the badass she is, jumps in and grabs the next gun in line, knowing that it has the bullet in it, and she shoots it and the bullet was actually in the right chamber. So if the boss won't have done that, then Ocelot would have killed Sokolov. Again, what would they have gained from that? Anyways, she gives Ocelot his gun back, but not before dismantling it, of course. The boss informs Volgan that the pain is dead and Volgan gets all grumpy and punches the wall, stating that he may be young, but he's definitely one of yours. She then sends another member of the Cobra unit, the Fear, to take care of Snake before walking away along with the rest of them. Snake makes his way through the warehouse into a jungle and into Granite's research facility, um, wearing his scientist uniform of course. And there he meets the building's namesake, Dr. Alexander Leonovich Granin. Luckily, he was, f for a lack of a better word, fucked up. He had been drinking heavily out of frustration since Volgan cut funding from his weapons project in order to f um, fund Sokolov's project instead, the Shagohod. Granin um, proudly reveals to Snake what his weapon idea was, a giant armored tank with two legs. He called it Metal Gear. Metal Gear. However, he says that he will send the plans to his friend in the United States in order to see his weapon come to life. Even if it's in the enemy's country? Uh, wow, okay. Anyways, Granin decides to help Snake rescue Sokolov just so he can get Sokolov to America and get out of Russia. That way, he believes, Funding would go back to his project. He also tells Snake about the Philosopher's Legacy, which is the source of Volgan's money that he uses to fund all of the advanced weapons research he, conduct, uh, he conducts um, and the construction of his fortress in the mountains, Groznygrad. His last favor to Snake is to give him a key card that would allow him to get to the mountains past the jungle in order to access Groznygrad. After that awkward encounter, Snake is attacked by the fear in the jungle. A Cobra member who uses a crossbow with venom-coated arrows. 
has invisibility technology, can jump very far, run fast, and walk on all fours bent backwards all exorcist style. Seriously, this battle would have been so much better at night. Snake defeats the fear, returns to the warehouse and opens a door with the key Grinnan gave him. There he gets a call from Eva and makes plans to meet at the top of the mountains in, inside some ruins so she could give him a key to access the underground tunnel Grinnan spoke of. Shortly after that, Snake is shot at from a no an unknown place, yet by another Cobra member. This is w um, this one being called The End. A ridiculously old dude who is considered to be the father of sniping and who can regenerate his health through photosynthesis. Yeah. His body and camo also change colors depending on his environment. After a really fun battle, Snake heads to the mountains but is confronted by the strongest um, members of the Cobra, the Great Ladder.